Redwood City, very good. So, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Psilocybin Summit. Happy 920. Uh, I'm so glad to be celebrating with you um, these four days of exploring the myth, magic, science, and culture of the sacred mushroom. And I am really very honored to have one of the uh, directors, one of the members of the 920 Coalition with us today. Um, Oliver Merovee is the global ambassador for the 920 Coalition. He's coming to us live from Guatemala. He is the co-founder of the School of Soma, an online sacred mushroom school. He's also one of the founding members and a cultivation instructor at, instructor at the Fungi Academy, an intentional co-living space and mushroom school in Guatemala. Originally born in Estonia, as soon as he held an adult passport, Oliver left and embarked on a worldwide journey to explore himself, new cultures, and ideas. His relationship with fungi began when he discovered the transformation formative powers of psilocybe mushrooms. In Fungi Academy, he has taught hundreds of people how to grow their own mushrooms. Oliver is passionate about all types of fungi, but because of his personal experience of healing and relief from tobacco addiction, his main interest is magic mushrooms. He is the global ambassador and speaker for 920 Coalition, an organization dedicated to psilocybe mushroom related education, harm reduction, and healing. Welcome, Oliver. Hello. It's good to be here. Thank you. Yes. So, yeah. Wow, that was that was the bio. Huh? That's and, you. And and uh, happy 920 from me also to everybody. I just literally finished uh, sending out newsletters and posting on social media and so yeah, it's it's live happening. Um I mean 920 itself maybe I just say with a few words. Uh, I have been part of it for the last two years, helping out uh, voluntarily, and uh, and it's been happening, I think, since 2015 or, or something like that. And to be honest, I barely have been even in, in contact with the people who founded it. I think they have moved on to doing other stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's happening now every day, every year. And uh, this year is especially exciting because of uh, all of the all of the things that have been happening on the mushroom scene. So yeah, the, I hope that the celebration is uh, is a good one for everybody. So to jump in, yeah. Are we both on the screen, or are you on the screen only, Daniel? I have it set for speaker view. And so I, well, as soon as I mute myself, we're going to focus on you. Okay. I, um, I encourage you to just take it away. Great. Fantastic. Okay. So uh, the topic of my talk today is uh, uh, magic mushrooms or sacred mushrooms in the age of psychedelic uh, maturity. And um, so just want a little bit like kind of what does it mean psychedelic psychedelic maturity and why is it why is it that suddenly we are becoming more mature on the scene and maybe even you know like the way that we to use language around it you know magic mushrooms sacred mushrooms psilocybe mushrooms uh, or maybe like shrooms like versus like consider consider like saying like uh, uh, I, I trip all on shrooms Versus, I had a sacred mushroom experience. And there's in in the language already. There is some difference in there. So, some of the reasons maybe why right now is kind of the coming of the age of maturity in the psychedelic world, or the maybe we're re-entering into it again in the in the popular culture in the West. West is um, well, okay. For instance, Michael Bolan came out with this very convincing book that has changed a lot of minds uh, there is uh, even like many skeptics have changed their minds because of that there is a tons of uh, uh, clinical research and 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 scientific science is happening around around psychedelics 
I think uh, the Imperial College of London opened a psychedelic research center specifically for that. There is, uh, and also because of this research is coming out, there's tons and tons of, of research coming out and this gets uh, rewritten into articles that talk all this good, good, good things about uh, psychedelics, what they do to us and what, what magic mushrooms are good for. And, uh, and because of that, uh, the kind of the taboo to talk about it is also being lifted. You know, like uh, a lot of people are coming out from the psychedelic closet are saying that, yeah, I did mushrooms and it helped me uh, or I did mushrooms and I had a lot of fun. You know, that's also OK to say. Uh, so so um, what else? Laws are changing. You know, that's the obvious one right now that uh, um, as I understand, the Oakland is a safe zone now for, for sacred mushrooms, but also do all other kinds of antigens. Um, Denver uh, is another safe zone. I, uh, I understand uh, Oregon wants to follow through statewide in California, in Colorado, and, and there are other initiatives coming up, especially now, like the, since the, the criminal nature is done a really good job of of popularizing this idea of like, yep, we can do it, you know, like everybody take action and, and locally and let's, let's go about it. And uh, not only, I mean, like also UK is col collecting petitions right now. And, and but also there are already many places in the world where it is also legal, you know, like or, or at least let's say that it is it is not uh, being enforced of if you are using it or doing anything with the sacred mushrooms. And, there are retreats happening in many places. Netherlands has retreats happening. Uh, Jamaica has retreats happening. Mexico has also retreats happening. Um, you know, there are various different kinds. There are also some other places that are kind of in a gray area that the things are happening there as well. And, and then, of course, there's tons of underground stuff. Um, so right now, I guess, you know, like it has been said in many places, but it's it's kind of like a psychedelic renaissance. And with the psychedelic renaissance, um, hopefully, like we go it with maturity this time uh, in the so. OK, so let's look a little bit in the 60s. There was also like this huge boom of psychedelics and everybody went not everybody but a lot of people went into it and 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 then it got kind of like closed down like really like super forcefully and yet you know like and now it's re-emerging kind of so what is the difference that we have right now versus the 60s so one of the differences i see is that like we have uh, psychedelic elders in the west People who have already done it in in their youth, and uh, since then, you know, have either continued using this or have, you know, come up with. You know, they're not just like young kids anymore. People are actually scientists, people are teachers, people are doing uh, different uh, things that are that are uh, yeah that are more mature, and because of this. Uh, elders we we have kind of like a sport network of not just like oh let's experiment and let's find a way of doing it there has been some lessons and and you can you can feel it in the way it is talked about you know a lot in the media or especially when when the when the when the scientists and the clinical study people when they're talking about it they're really really careful they're like you know like yes you know, like under a under a uh, certain circumstances, magic mushrooms have been beneficial to a great number of people. So under a certain under a circum certain circumstances. So what is this? What are the circumstances? And um, I mean, a lot has been talked about it, but it would be good if this would be. You know, when when uh, people children get into their young teenage and in a lot of countries there is like for instance sex education that talks about i don't know using of condoms or, or the safety of that it doesn't really necessarily mean that 
that these young people will all immediately be like, well, great, let's get some condoms and let's get it on, you know, like it's just something that uh, really helps and it's like a basic knowledge that everybody should have because, you know, when you look at how many people there are on this planet and obviously people have sex, so it's, it's good to give some education about that. And the same thing I feel about uh, psychedelics is like since the since the beginning of history, people have been trying to get high, and uh, and so it would be nice if we have also some basic information about that available. So a lot has been talked about set and setting. So I guess this is one of those basic informations. If you have even a little bit been in a psychedelic community and then you you know done at least some kind of research of what is a good way of approaching uh, approaching uh, magic mushrooms and other psychedelics, then set and setting definitely has come up for you. Um, so there might be some other S's in there and different authors have added different things. And then one of the good things to add to this is also skill is when you understand uh, what is the basic skills to have in order to in order to have a good experience and uh, and maybe not even a good experience only, but like a safe experience, because there is also this confusion about like what is a good experience, what is a bad trip. And and, you know, that is also this paradigm is being shifted right now of, by uh, by the clinical studies. And also, like, for instance, Zendo group that says, like, you know, there is no like don't talk about it as a bad trip. Uh, this is very limiting. You don't get the benefit out of it. Uh, talk about it as a as a difficult experience, as a challenging, challenging experience. So, yeah. So how go through how to use uh, this uh, set and setting and your own skill, which might be you might be practicing some kind of I don't know mindfulness meditation. This can be hugely beneficial when you are journeying in in a, in a psychedelic world. So yeah, so set and setting. Uh, what else? Um, so yeah, education. There is tons of education coming available for that. Uh, I think the like 2016 California Institute on Integral Studies came out with uh, with a first first master's program of becoming a psychedelic therapist. And now all of these other things are happening, like I said before, Imperial College. And, and there, is, uh, there are underground ways of learning about it. There are above ground. You can learn about uh, integration techniques. You can, there is, there's a lot of this is available and this is coming more and more out and because it is okay to suddenly talk about this. Um, so another thing is considering the environmental and cultural impact of the psychedelic renaissance. <coughs> so there's different, like, okay, let's start with, um, with the environmental side of it. Um, imagine right now in this moment, Everybody who is curious in psychedelics wants to do, for instance, peyote cactus, and they start seeking it out. Very fast, we would run out of peyote cactus if this would happen, because the the natural habitat of the of that cacti is very, very small. It's like some parts in the United States and a small part of the desert in in Mexico, and it's already you know becoming endangered. So it's not a very sustainable way of doing this. Uh, other option is, you know, let's go do a ayahuasca retreat in Be Peru. And uh, if also everybody starts flying in there to do that, it's also not the most most sustainable option. And uh, with, with this with this Peru and certain, Peru or or South America. Uh, I would say, you know, ayahuasca tourism, there comes also like this uh, cultural impact because a lot of Westerners are going there and, and we are bringing our culture there. At the same time, where this 
medicine originally is being used and who are the people who are serving it often are like the local people and us as Westerners, we don't really have a living tradition of the, of the ayahuasca. And so <clears throat> it's, it's an amazing experience. It can be an amazing experience, healing experience. It can be, I'm not, you know, like, I'm not saying that like, don't do ayahuasca. It's great. If you have the opportunity, if you, if you can uh, afford to go there and if you can do it uh, with somebody who's trustworthy because there are tons of people who because it's a really good way of earning money right now so there are tons of people who are not coming from the purest intention or maybe they do but they don't have the experience so yeah if you have the chance go for it uh, but if you're looking at uh, the magic mushrooms, they're very accessible. And they, there isn't like, surely there is a, as a culture, like a living culture, living tradition right now with the Mazatec and, and Zapotec people in Mexico, but uh, they have been used uh, all around the world and they're very accessible. Like you can find them wildly growing in, uh, well, all, all the climates of the world, maybe not in the North and South, South Pole, but like almost everywhere else. And also it's very easy to cultivate them. It doesn't take uh, a lot of resources. So because of that, it, it seems to be like this, the, the, the psychedelic age of mat maturity and the, the magic mushrooms seem to be the most, yeah, the, the best uh, candidate to, to be widely available for the people as more and more places will make it legal. So, yeah. Um, growing the mushrooms is not difficult and you, like, you don't need to go to a desert or go to a other side of the world in order to have them you can literally grow them in your home and the materials to do so are available basically almost everywhere in the world um, okay that much about cultivation I'm like I will do a round of questions of answers at the end and so if you have more questions I, I have been cultivating mushrooms I started the first time, I think, 13 years ago with magic mushrooms. So if you have questions, I'm open to answering them. Uh, so another thing about what kind of defines this uh, psychedelic era of maturity is uh, we are starting now with this huge avalanche of, of positive research coming out and like, kind of like nitpicking like the the best uh, kind of things and talking about them because it's very exciting to do. We are being starting to talk about the difficult topics as well. You know, like um, spiritual emergencies that are induced by psychedelics or psychedelic induced uh, psychosis. And so we, yeah, so these things, they are also important to talk. It's not like, hey, you know, there's something wrong with you, you are depressed or you have an OCD, post-traumatic stress disorder, great, have some mushrooms, like it's for everybody. And, and we don't exactly know what else is happening there. Like a lot of people are saying, like if you, are, if you have like certain forms of mental illness or you're diagnosed or your family has been, then you shouldn't be doing or whatnot. Um, I mean, I'm not recommending everybody do, but I'm just like, let's open this to, 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 the, to the research. Maybe we just don't know it yet. Maybe, maybe the scientists haven't figured it out, but until then, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to stay clear. Um, so yeah. Uh, you know, in the, in the past, I think in 60s, 70s, there was this advertising of, I don't know, your, your, this is your brain on, on drugs and uh, eggs being fried on the pan do you guys remember that so yeah there's obviously like some kind of propaganda in there and and also there was some kind of propaganda of like people jumping off from buildings they go insane on i don't know lsd or whatever and they start jumping off from buildings and and 
as I understand, that's also a myth. It's a it's a like a fear propaganda that has been put in there. At the same time, there is this thing. Uh, people end up in in psychotic mo- psychotic episodes. You know, sometimes a short one that might be just part of your I don't know your kind of dark night of the soul or going to the underworld. But sometimes it lasts for a while, and then they don't know how to integrate this, or maybe actually they need some professional help. So, but that the, the thing about it is, is that like a lot of places say like this is the reason why it shouldn't be legal, and mushrooms and psychedelics is such a powerful way that moves your energy. I don't know energy is like energy or like I don't I don't know so much about the background of this but also for instance in Germany once Kundalini Yoga became very popular they opened these treatment centers for people who had uh, psychotic episodes after doing Kundalini Yoga or or Vipassana meditation so it can be it's these are powerful kind of psycho technologies and things can happen. And because of this, that somebody had like a, a Kundalini indu- induced psychosis, or they call it also like Kundalini syndrome, is not the reason why I make Kundalini yoga you know, illegal around the world. Maybe it's reasons to bring in more education about it so people are aware. So yeah, so that's just what I want to say about that. Let me see what else I have here. Cool. Also, uh, psychedelic uh, harm reduction, uh, care and aftercare is happening. And I guess like TAM integration is already one of the good examples of like how this aftercare can be happening through through professional integration. And, and this is being talked about more and more and, and hopefully also experienced more and more. So, yeah, uh, groups like Zendo, Dance Safe, they are many different organizations that are specifically working on the harm reduction because uh you know like we're right now in this very exciting age where like it really like the psychedelic renaissance is happening everything is getting uh like like there is there is hope there's light now wow okay things are getting legal like it's being accepted by society so nobody really wants that we have some kind of uh uh like mishaps or like uh uh, you know something really happening in a in a place that or in a way that it, it brings in bad publicity to the psychedelic community so because of that it's really good that we have uh, information education and available and different groups are working on this uh, harm reduction okay yeah okay this is a good one so so there is different legal ways to access, at least in the States, uh, psilocybin and also, I guess, MDMA and things. If there is, if you have some kind of medical condition, if you have a PTSD, if you are, if you are depressed and nothing else has really worked, uh, you know, like there's, there's different, you know, end of life anxiety. And it's that, that a lot is being talked about that of the therapeutic use of psychedelics, of psilocybin. And at the same time, there is this huge amount of people who might not be able to, I don't know, diagnose, get a diagnosed that there is something wrong, but like their life could be considerably, you know, enhanced or they can find more purpose or, or live a life that is more fulfilled or just have fun um, with, with the help of psilocybin and magic mushrooms. So there is so there is increased availability and 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 conversation dialogue around this so-called uh, like healthy normals, people who don't need to go do a study and and might have different reasons why are they into it. Okay, so what else? Mm. Okay, this brings me to this different paradigms why people 
engage with psychedelics and and just i was just talking about this kind of therapeutic healing reason um and uh myself i i have used it for that reason i have gotten help like daniel before said in my bio uh, from from the smoking addiction i was really really addicted to smoking tobacco especially together with weed i really like to smoke it together with weed and and kind of made me withdraw from life and i wasn't really functional i mean i'm not saying anything bad about tobacco or weed it's like since then i have done it without it uh, very very rarely though and uh, sometimes i still use uh, tobacco by the ceremonial tobacco rapé that you snuff in your nose so I'm not like saying that there is anything wrong with it, but for me, the way that I was doing it, it's like just constantly like stopping one, starting another every day for years uh, was not working for me. And uh, I made an intentional experience for myself. I designed it with some music. Uh, I, actually, the music I got from Mendel Kalen. I don't know if you guys know that. I just tried it here. It's, a, it's really good to check it out. Check him out. He has some really good playlists about like what to use on, on psychedelics. And I made it in an intentional way. I also used um, some inspiration from the 12 step program of like, there's like the first, I think the first one is like, uh, like have some kind of metaphor about a higher power in your life or in the world, whatever it is, you know, like your higher self, the universe, God, what not like whatever works for you cho choose something but like have this this would really help and then like you know like acknowledge that you're powerless because you've tried so much you've tried really hard and you basically still messed up and you're still addicted and ask for help and so i did that i did like a large dose of mushrooms i asked for help and uh, yeah i received help so i'm i don't have that as a thing anymore i really like i'm more awake like in a sense, like I'm not numbing myself and uh, yeah, I just, it, life is more colorful and fulfilling. So that, so that is one of the reasons, like I, there is like kind of like this, this compass that I got from the medicinal mindfulness people. Um, so one is uh, the psychological exploration, healing and addiction relief is one of them, but also, you know, PTSD relief, uh, releasing trauma, end of life anxiety can be also partially in there there are other reasons why people are doing and and uh, and uh, before before this research became really popular one of the main reasons of doing it was kind of having fun celebrating with friends enjoying yourself going for through a, like, a, like a psychedelic exploration and um also, like maybe creativity, doing art. That's something that is not made as attractive anymore right now. There's a lot of focus on this um, therapeutic side. Um, but, you know, it's not to be downplayed. In order to live a happy, healthy life, you really should celebrate and have fun and if you know how to approach it, if you get educated and, and do it in a good way, in a safe way, then you can have a lot of fun with uh, sacred mushrooms. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so uh, another thing um, is scientific problem solving and discovery. So this is like kind of like a very left brain focused, very like rational, it's like, finding uh, solutions to, to problems that uh, you have maybe tried to figure out. Maybe there's some design or engineering pro pro problems and you haven't found solution. I think like uh, uh, James Fadiman did like a ton of research with it uh, and he wrote about it in his book, Coastal Psychedelic Explorer's Guide. And he did it with LST though, but how people who had like some kind of engineering design issue, like professionals who've been working on it for a while, and didn't really find a solution 
came in in an intentional environment and when the time was right when they're kind of like peaking or something they were focusing on this and i think it was something crazy like 80 percent of the people found the solution to that it's like yeah and also i mean like things like uh you guys have one of those uh, computer mouse i think it was invented uh, from by somebody who was on the lsd and got uh, got inspiration from there uh, the double helix of DNA, all of these things. So, like, has been so as there has been science has science and academia has been highly influenced by, and there's a lot of inspiration that has come from psychedelics. Uh, also, right now there is uh, the microdosing boom. You know, like uh, like taking a little bit, being still fully there, but uh, there's a little bit extra. You know, like something is happening. You're more focused. You're more patient. You don't react so fast can communicate maybe better at least these are some of the anecdotes that have come out and, and now there's also some research happening i haven't looked quite into what's the what's the results there but thousands of people are claiming that it really helps so that, that might also be there like oh yeah i'm i can you know focus work better communicate better so this is the scientific problem solving and discovery side of it and then there is boom to the completely other side is uh spiritual and religious communion or spiritual and religious uh, experiences so these are like this four sides of primary sides of the intentions and the reasons and the and the kind of the paradigms why people are using it and there is information about all of this coming out right now um there is this uh, book the psychedelic future of the mind by robert P. Thomas, and um, in there, he talks about other cool stuff, but one of the ideas that he got on one backs is that uh, religion has gone through um, kind of like a reform or a revolution or a paradigmas, paradigmas change by going from this very ritual based when people were just following ritual because of them like most of people did not have access to uh, being literate reading books books were like this you know like this really expensive technology like i don't even know what to put it nowadays side by side with it you know some kind of super computer that is beyond your local home computer and um and so like people were just following the ritual, you just do that, you know, you go have your mass, eat your bread, drink the wine, whatever the case is, or like whatever the other religions were using, it was ritual based. And then a huge revolution happened uh, with the printing press, the technology of printing press made scripture available to everybody. And uh, you, in order to be religious, you do, did not necessarily to have this this kind of middleman telling you how you're supposed to do things you could just read the scripture and contemplate it and and get your wisdom from there and uh so so roberts is saying that right now is kind of like the second big revolution where the religious uh, experience is becoming more important than the scripture itself i mean the scripture sure can be still of great inspiration but if you have had an experience it doesn't matter what some kind of book says it doesn't matter what other people are saying like you know that and so that's that's kind of like one of the things he mentions that or maybe even it's like arguably that we are kind of re-entering into this place because you know, a lot of anthropologists and and uh what not people are suggesting that the origin of religion maybe is coming from angiogenic plants and fungi in the first place okay so that okay so um one of the ideas with this age of psychedelic maturity is like how do we uh, how do we carry ourselves as members of the psychedelic community in uh, such ways that uh, 
that other people who are not completely on board with this idea yet would feel safe that we are reintegrating uh, psychedelics, you know, natural psychedelics into our into our society. So, you know, one of the things like I started the talk about was uh, the language that we use around it. And so there is language that we can use that is, you know, neutral or good or, or mature. And there is language like tripping poles and, you know, like which rooms and, and like getting fucked from your head. And, you know, it's maybe, maybe not, maybe not. And um, so that one, one of the ways is the, is the language. And other, other thing is like the role modeling. Uh, if you already have more experience, you know, whenever you're talking with somebody and like they're asking questions to you, don't assume that they have as exp much experience as you do. And if they're asking, you know, curious about your experience and whatnot, you know, mention a little bit about set and setting and just say like, hey, have you heard about this? You know, just it's always, always good to know, you know, choose a, choose a, a safe environment that is away from interruptions, including auditory interruptions. And, uh, and, you know, be with somebody who you completely trust and be in a good state of mind and take a bubble of maybe three days of one day to prepare, one day to have the experience, another day to just, just you know, uh, integrate, come down, decompress, and uh, tie up any loose ends. Don't have, don't have anything going on, anything else that you need to do on the same day or the day after. Just like be completely free. This is the most important thing that's happening to you. I mean, like, some people, some some research places that have done it in a certain environment, in a certain way, you know, there's a huge percentage of people who say that this is the most you know, important experience of their lifetime, or or at least one of the three most export, most most important. So, not to have that exp expectation. The expectation is not the same as intention, but if this is a possibility, then surely you can make three days free. If it could be the potential is there, uh, yeah. So this is the most important thing that's happening to you on these three days. And um, more about role modeling, not just that we are role modeling the, the people who are now with curiosity entering the psychedelic community and are looking out for their own experiences. We are, in a sense, also um, role modeling the the upcoming generation of, of young young people maybe people are children right now but at some point they will maybe try it and uh, how much better it is that uh, like for instance if you're a parent that your child completely trusts you feel safe talking about these topics and when he starts to become curious or somebody's offering or whatever the case is then he then he then he dares to come and ask from you not from just like trying to figure it out by themselves and um yeah so basically role modeling and the language maybe there are some other good ways of going about this um and that is kind of i think right now yeah the the last idea that i had is is that we are becoming the role models and uh, we can do it in such a way that society will feel safe to reintegrate psychedelics uh, yeah, into our everyday lives again. Cool, so this is it. I am open to your questions now. Great, very good. Thank you so much, Oliver. And I will field some questions for you. Give me a second. I get water. I'm really dry mouthed. Okay. We got to let Oliver get water. But let's get some questions coming. Ah. All right. So Zachary said, you said that mushrooms helped you quit tobacco. Could you elaborate mm. on what experience, what that experience was like? And what did they show you that helped? Okay. 
I can, yeah, definitely, because it's very close to my heart. I mean, literally, I, I was so addicted that I noticed, like, I, might, I had this wheezing, like, ee, ee, sometimes when I went to sleep in the night, and, like, I, I tried, I really tried to quit, but then I had, a, again, like, spliff in my hands, and, like, I was crying. I was like, uh, why am I doing this? But I just, I couldn't stop. That's actually the meaning of addiction. You, you do something, uh, although you don't want to do that. Um, so, like the way I approach this is, uh, yeah, I, lo I looked into uh, the twelve-step way, and there is there is a page. I might be able to check it out at some point, but there's a website that has them in different kind of religious or non-religious contexts that you can you can have a twelve-step way as a as a Christian, you can have a twelve-step way as a Buddhist, you can have it as a Native uh, American uh, Indian. So, yeah, so there's diff different, different ways in there and you choose the language or the metaphor of the, of the greater power that you feel most comfortable with. And so I chose mine and I turned into great spirit or the universe. And for me, that was a comfortable one that didn't get a knee jerk reaction. And, <laughs> and, uh, I, 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 wrote, I wrote down my intention. I got about five to six grams of mushrooms, uh, tried. And I mean, this by no means you don't know what's the strength of the mushrooms, but I was aiming for a strong uh, experience. And um, I did, uh, I did took the playlist. Uh, there is like this psilocybin for depression relief or something like that like mental galen has like a bunch of them in his uh i think mix cloud and also in his uh spotify spotify and i did took the playlist um i told other people in the community that i'm doing this you know give me some space but just to, just to know that i'm doing this and um I clo close myself in my room. I have one of those mindful masks. I put this on, I put my headphones on and I prepared music for the next like four hours and I went in. But before that, uh, I had written down my, my intention. I mean, so like, there is a question, you know, when is, it, when is intention an intention and when does it start to become a prayer? You know, like when you, when you have an intention without maybe expectation, but you direct it to a higher power, then it becomes a prayer. And so I said it out loud uh, because I heard from some ceremonies and some people that like once you say it out, it is one step closer to manifesting in the material realm. It's not mental anymore. It's already vibrating in the air. And so I said it out and I had my experience uh, in, in, yeah, I went in with that. Um, in the middle of the experience, I at some point came out and I said it again. And really, like, I felt it deeply in my heart. Like, this is one of the biggest things that is holding me back right now to live a fulfilled life. And, uh, yeah, I, I came out of it free. And also, to be honest, to be completely transparent, this wasn't the first time I did it like this. Like, I did it in a like, little bit different context, uh, like a year before that. And I still, after almost a year, I relapsed and I started smoking again. But... At least I had this hope of like, oh, I know, I know what I need to do. And I know that this helps. And so now I have been free for like, I think, six, seven months right now. Fantastic. Do we have any other questions? Or maybe you could just tell us a little bit about how the Fungi Academy works. So you're there right now. You're in Guatemala. You're running retreats. Uh, people are coming to you from all over the world to learn how to grow and to evidently immerse themselves in nature. And yeah. so what is that like? So, yeah, I can, I can give you a, I can turn around my camera. So here is a view, There's tons of nature around here. We are, we are in Lake Atitlan right now. And uh, we are at the third home of Funk Academy been doing this for now almost uh, four years on the new year's eve we're gonna reach four years and yeah it's a it's a intentional permaculture community and a mushroom school so we are living together with a bunch of people and while some of us are um, 
kind of more constant. A lot of people are very transient. They come, they stay for a month or for two months or for three months or for half a year, and then they move on to some somewhere else. And so right now it is our green season, which usually has less people, but we're still here right now, I think 12 people right now. I think there's a cacao ceremony happening right now. And we were preparing today actually for a 920 potluck. So we're going to invite the outside community also over to have a little potluck and and give a little bit, uh, a few talks in there as well with, with some good food. But yeah, like we teach people how to grow mushrooms. We have weekly workshops. We've ha had them for a while, but also we have um, courses and uh, apprentice programs and, and even teacher trainings. So they start starting from November, which is starting the high season. And people can come and really, really get uh, not just the knowledge and the wisdom of how to grow your mushrooms, how to use them for medicine, how to make your own medicines, how to use them in the gardens with permaculture, but you also get the experience and, and, and the coaching. And we also, we do uh, teach about uh, magic mushrooms as well, because, um, you know, I was looking at the talk uh, yesterday by, by Seth, who's also been in Punk Academy a couple of times, and he was like, yeah, I was doing this mycelial mass. And, and uh, suddenly there was like, in the end, I was asking people, you know, who's interested in what? And then he found out that most people are interested in magic mushrooms. So we've been doing the same here and asking in our courses that have like 12 people coming. And uh, we ask like, you know, why? And then we found, found out often that more than half are interested in this. So we do teach. Uh, with analogous mushrooms of how to grow and and we go into as well as uh, you know how to use it in a good way and and all of this basic information about we have a whole day in our six day course that talks about that oh and the, the soma yes Do we have more? yeah great so the school of soma is uh another project that we've been working on is uh the world's first online magic mushroom school that teaches how to grow your own magic mushrooms in a very easy way, but also how to, how to uh, navigate the psychedelic medicine space generally and, and afterwards how to integrate these experiences to your life to have you know, kind of maximum benefit from it and, uh, and how to do all of these things yourself. You know, if you don't have access, because like, you know, everybody cannot come to you in, in time integration and everybody cannot go to, I don't know, Netherlands or whatever the case is to the retreat, but, but everybody can learn at least something that makes it a little bit better for them. And, and this is the purpose of, of School of Soma. And we're making a platform specifically, not just like I'm, I can teach the mushroom cultivation side. I have quite uh, like, I have enough knowledge of that one. But we're bringing in also other teachers who are, you know, teachers and uh, and people, people from kind of traditional ways, but also people from more scientific, therapeutic ways that can teach you their different ways. We have we have uh, right now as teachers, we have um, James Chesso from the Psychedelic Adventures Through the Mind. He's wrote a book about uh, decomposing your shadow. So he's going to be doing a a module about uh, shadow work uh, with mushrooms and we also have Julian Wayne who I think is also one of the one of the presenters here yes and uh, and he's going to be talking about the ceremonial way and how to design your ceremony in a good way and to have more more experience you know getting higher as his, as his book is saying so that is school of soma and right now I'm like working on this we are planning to come out uh, with a crowdfunding campaign so everybody who's interested can help out to actually create this. It takes some resources to, to do a really good course. Uh, yeah, so that, these are the two kind of blurbs of my own promotion here. Um, right on. So I have a question from a therapist. Yeah. So as a therapist, I want to be able to integrate psychedelic assisted therapy into my practice. The California Institute of Integral Studies is offering a certificate for therapists, which costs $10,000. Do you think at uh -huh. this point in time, a certificate like this is necessary? Mm. I don't, I cannot set, talk to that because first of all, I'm not a therapist myself. Second of all, I don't have, I haven't been in the, in that 
you know, I haven't talked with the people who've gone through this, this program. Um, I understand that uh, California Institute on Integral Studies is, is, is kind of pricey and like not everybody <laughs> can maybe afford that. So if you, I don't know, like, how do I say this? I said it in a really nice way. If you hang out in certain circles in the Bay Area, in the different uh, societies that are there in different mushroom places, there are people who know about the underground trainings that are way more uh, affordable, but very professional. It's been happening for a long time already. <laughs> very good. Um, so, so let's say... What do you think are good competencies for somebody who is going to be holding space for somebody in a mushroom ceremony? How about that? How about it, Dan? Uh, first of all, I do want to kind of like give a little disclaimer about School of Soma that we don't teach you how to become a therapist. It's not a thing. We're teaching you who want to have experience yourself how to have it better. But I can still like give you kind of my ideas about how to... How, who would you want to have maybe sitting into your session? Uh, maybe you want to have a friend or something, for instance. Yeah. So first of all, somebody who you trust and you have uh, built with rapport with. More uh, trust and rapport there is, the better and deeper you can go with that person. Uh, somebody who uh, maybe has some kind of practice and knows how to kind of stay mindful and out of their own bullshit while the experience is happening so that really helps uh, somebody who has a lot of compassion or has a compassion at least towards you uh, that can be really really helpful uh, somebody who has had experiences themselves with psychedelics so don't you know like doesn't make sense to get somebody to sit in who's like I love you and I, I, you, I really trust you and everything, but like I have no experience. I have no idea what you're going to go through. So definitely choose somebody who has experiences and also maybe somebody who's had uh, challenging experiences. Somebody who's gone through some of this dark shadow cavey stuff that sometimes does come up. So I don't know. Dark this is right now some of the ideas that I have. Dark shadow cavey stuff is the name of my next project. Aha. <laughs> the, some of the best stuff is in there. So James says there will be some populations that need clinical oversight, but a large percentage of people interested in psychedelic medicines can with the right education and settings do this work safely on their own or with a peer. Yeah, I do kind of agree that because, you know, like there is this, I know Cardian wrote about it, how, how this research came out that like, Psychedelic mushrooms are one of the safest substances, like with coffee, tobacco, weed, whatever, putting next to it. They're safer than any of these, and like very rarely something actually happens. So yeah, I do, I do agree with that. As long as people have the basic knowledge of like, oh, what can go wrong, and and what, when do you notice that like, wait, this person might need some professional help, maybe like. He didn't completely honestly tell what's their history with mental illness about not so. Right. I sort of feel like there are that there are people in the medical establishment that would have you believe that the people who need clinical oversight is much larger than it is. And the people who are who don't and can do things with general education and appear are small. And and that's it's not exactly true. If you have you know, um, you know, some therapists view the world through the lens of pathology, you know, that most people are sick and it's just, and it's, it's not actually yeah. the case. Yeah. And I think also it's uh, other part of it is like this little bit of like uh, concern about that. We're going to go all crazy and sixties with the psychedelic uh, Renaissance and then it's better to like fingers like, crossed. Just, yeah. Let's just get it out there. And like, let's not, kind of talk about the obvious thing that there are so many people who are doing it and so many people who could possibly benefit from that who are not don't have the access right now yeah um i don't know i mean i mean the, the 60s had their pros and cons is, is all i can think of 
you know, yeah. there's a, there were some nice parts about the sixties. You know, there were some parts that we talked to Robert Forte yesterday, who is a historian and he's very, you can watch his talk on the website, but he's very well versed in, in both the good and the bad and, and the potential, you know, for things to go dark even today. And also the, the potential for things to go really right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we are now here as we are, and this was just part of the story to get here. Mm -hmm. So I would like to thank you. Do you have any last words? We do have to go for, we have, um, coming up next is the test pilot round table where we have Ooh. a group of people who went through John Hopkins studies and they're all going to get together and talk about their experiences. And so we're really excited about that. But before that, do you have any last words that you want to leave people with? I, I think I'm good. Oh, I, I heard you're going to give me a, a pass for my mom. So I'm just going to say hi to my mom. Ciao, Emma. Oh, is your mom here? <laughs> I don't think so. I think this is just like uh, this is some kind of weird time right now in Estonia. So right. it's going to look the recording. Well, hello, mom from the past. Thank you for Fantastic. giving birth to Oliver. We, we love him. We appreciate him. Yeah, great job, mom. Great, great job, mom. <laughs> Okay, All thank right. you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Namaste. Thank you, Oliver. Peace.